This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, April 8th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Typically, what is supposed to be a busy yet celebratory day, signed I, when the Maryland General Assembly closes for the session. This year will be a somber closing to the session. Delegate Michael Bush, Speaker of the House of Delegates, passed away yesterday afternoon at the age of 72. Bush was the longest serving speaker in the history of the state of Maryland. His health had been deteriorating over the past few years, having gone through a liver transplant in 2017, a heart bypass in 2018, and most recently, a bout of pneumonia that had taken him away from his beloved House of Delegates for the past 10 days. Governor Larry Hogan said in a tweet, this is a profoundly sad day for Maryland. Mike Bush was a giant in our government, the longest serving speaker in our state's history. He cared deeply about improving the lives of Marylanders, and his legacy is evident in the many legislative achievements. His recent foe, Comptroller Peter Franchot, said, Remembering my longtime former colleague, Mike Bush, who died today at 72, for all of our honest differences, I'll always remember him as a highly effective Speaker of the House, a mentor to so many young lawmakers, and a public servant who remained exceptionally responsive to his Anne Arundel County constituents. I'm praying that the Speaker's family and everyone who loved him will find peace and comfort in this time of sadness. With 32 years in the House of Delegates, Speaker Bush had an awful lot of success stories, but some of the ones that come to mind are 2018's Red Flag Law, back in 2012, where Maryland recognized and allowed same-sex marriage. 2013, he eliminated the death penalty in Maryland. And most recently, in 2019, the reform of the University of Maryland medical system and increasing the minimum wage to $15 per hour. Anybody that knew Bush knew that he was a giant advocate for Maryland Hall and was instrumental in bringing that from an old high school to a world-class performing arts center. He was very receptive to everybody, and anybody could approach him and ask him a question. He was often seen walking about town and really feeling the pulse of the people that he represented. In fact, we approached the speaker just shortly before his liver transplant on the Maryland Crabs and asked him if he'd want to do a podcast, and he said, absolutely. In politics, people take sides, and the Speaker was not immune from the barbs of policy. However, as sharp as those barbs may have been, those that were throwing them had a genuine respect for the Speaker and all that he stood for. Somebody is not re-elected for 32 years without doing something right for his constituents. And for that, Speaker Bush is to be remembered and lauded. Governor Hogan has also ordered all Maryland flags to be flown at half-staff until internment. And Bush is survived by his wife, Cindy, two daughters, Megan and Aaron, as well as three sisters. Our thoughts, our prayers go out to the family and friends of Maryland's House of Delegates Speaker, Michael Aaron Bush, dead at 72. The Maryland House of Delegates did a surprise move over the weekend to resurrect a bill to remove a statute of limitations for lawsuits rising from child sexual abuse. That bill had failed in the Maryland Senate. So the House Judiciary Committee took many elements of that bill and tacked them onto an unrelated bill. It is an unusual move, and in the end, there's a good chance that actually both bills may die, but this is one that may get through. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens on sign die later on today. As we do close out the General Assembly session, here's sort of a recap of some of the bigger laws that were passed. Up at Johns Hopkins University, they are now able to have their own armed police force on campus. The legislature removed regulatory authority of alcohol, tobacco, and gasoline from the Comptroller's office. Hogan vetoed that bill, and the General Assembly overrode it. They've allocated more than a billion dollars in additional education funding over the next three years to begin implementing the Kerwin Commission recommendations. Maryland is the first state in the country to ban styrofoam containers for food and drink. Local school boards are now going to be able to decide whether classes start before or after Labor Day. Governor Hogan vetoed that bill and the legislature overrode the veto. Maryland's minimum wage will gradually increase to $15 an hour. It's the sixth state in the country to do that. Governor Hogan did also veto that bill, but the General Assembly also overrode that veto. Five oyster sanctuaries would be permanently protected in law to prohibit catching oysters. Hogan vetoed that. The House voted to override it, and the Senate is expected to override it as well today. One that probably should have been a law forever, but law enforcement now is going to be required to send rape kits to a crime lab for testing within 30 days of receiving it. I'm not sure why anybody would wait more than three minutes after receiving it. And finally, Maryland's age for buying tobacco will rise from 18 to 21. 
including all tobacco-related products such as electronic smoking devices, so that's the jewels and everything else. Apparently, you can go to war at 18, but you can't smoke a cigarette until you're 21 in Maryland. Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman announced a gun violence prevention task force, which was one of the campaign promises as he was running for county executive. It is made up of 20 members of the public and 16 government officials who will be ex officio members. It's going to be chaired by Bishop Charles Carroll, who is an Annapolis minister whose son was actually killed in 2016 here in Annapolis. It'll be vice chaired by Andrea Chambly and Maria Hyassen, both of whom lost their husbands in the June 28th Capital Gazette shooting. Andrea is the wife of John McNamara and Maria is the wife of Rob Hyassen. The task force is going to research and collect all the data on gun violence, crimes, and suicide. They're going to begin meeting at the end of this month and will continue to meet monthly through April of 2020. In announcing the task force, Pittman said it's going to be a group of people that has opened all kinds of ideas, but clearly the goal is to prevent gun violence. Some of the recommendations are going to be controversial, and that's okay. We are going to hear from everybody. While not local to Anne Arundel County, this is up in Baltimore County, but because it can spread, I want everybody to be aware of this. Maryland's Department of Health has issued a warning after confirming a case of measles in Baltimore County. The department has said that anyone who visited 4000 Old Court Road in Pikesville last Tuesday may have been exposed to measles. They say that anybody that was at that address should monitor themselves for any early symptoms, including fever. People who develop symptoms of measles should contact their health care provider right away, but should not go to child care, school, work, or out in public as they might have very early symptoms of measles and might be very contagious. The Rotary Club of Annapolis is gearing up for the 74th annual Crab Feast, and the date, mark it on your calendars, is August 2nd from 5 to 8 p.m. at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. As you know, this is the world's largest crab feast, and it is an all-you-can-eat affair and an all-you-can-drink affair as well, with large number one male crabs, Maryland vegetable crab soup, Maryland corn on the cob, beef barbecue sandwiches, watermelon draft beer, assorted sodas and water. And they expect 2,500 or more people to attend. And they're going to polish off 320 bushels of crabs, 3,400 ears of corn, 100 gallons of crab soup, 150 pounds of beef barbecue, and hundreds of gallons of soft drinks and beer. The real cool thing about this event is that it is entirely green, thanks to Annapolis Green, who does the green drinks. They are partnering again to make sure that 100% of everything at that event is recycled or composted. Tickets are 70 bucks. They are on sale right now. They will go up to $75 at the gate, and you can get them at annapolisrotary.org. And finally, as we wrap up, downtown Annapolis might be able to get $25,000 for improvements. Independent We Stand, which is a small business movement, has their fourth annual America's Main Street contest with a grand prize of $25,000. If the city is successful, Eric Evans, who is the executive director of the Downtown Annapolis Partnership, said he would put it towards sprucing up downtown Annapolis and creating a placemaking event to thank the community for their support. Please go and vote. You can go to Main Street contest.com simple enough scroll down find annapolis and click vote you don't need to register you don't need to give your email there's nothing there and you can vote more than once so i do recommend that all right that is the top news for today please make sure you check out that first link in our show notes to find out all the ways you can connect with us Give us a rating or a review if you're someplace that you can do that. Give us a recommendation to your friends and colleagues. Hang tight. We've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast coming up in just a minute after this message from Mac Medics in Severna Park. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief, have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore, Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day, usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road, or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. 
I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMD Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, April 8th. After a spectacular weekend with plenty of sunshine and temps in the 60s and 70s across the Annapolis region, today will bring even warmer temps with highs in the upper 70s or maybe even lower 80s to all of Anne Arundel County, but it will come with a chance of rain, primarily in the p.m. hours today, and with those rain chances comes a chance of strong to severe thunderstorms, most likely in the 4 to 8 p.m. time frame, so stay tuned for updates throughout the day as this weather threat unfolds. Then skies will start to clear tomorrow with more 70s, followed by a couple of very nice days on Wednesday and Thursday with sunshine and highs most likely in the 60s. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMD Weather. Make it a great day out there today, and be sure to keep an eye on the skies and look for updates in the PM hours. Make sure you get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather-informed. Join Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation on Saturday, April 27, 2019 at our Denim and Diamonds Bash in Annapolis. Denim and Diamonds is a fun evening under the stars featuring fabulous cuisine and gourmet food trucks, live and silent auction, and a live band. Last year, AAMC cared for more than 2,000 patients in our emergency departments suffering from mental illness or addiction. Help us expand much-needed inpatient and outpatient programs and services for your community. For tickets and sponsors, Visit AAMCDenimAndDiamonds.org. Special thanks to our platinum sponsors, AAMC Medical Staff, the Chesapeake Bayhawks, Comcast, the Evan K. Thallenberg Family, What's Up Media, and WRNR. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.